In this video, we are going to review the basic graph types that we have learned in this course. We're also going to think about if we have a set of data, how do we decide which type of graph to use to represent that data? So if you have some data, the first thing that you want to think about is, is the data qualitative or quantitative? Remember that qualitative data is data that is broken into categories. For example, if you had an election and there were four different candidates and you wanted to see how each of them did, each of the four candidates is a different category. And that data would be qualitative data. It's data that you can't attach a number to. On the other hand, quantitative num data is data that is numbers. You can attach numbers to it, or they are actually numbers. So if your data is qualitative, you have two basic choices. You could make a bar graph or you could make a pie chart. Remember that a bar graph shows the frequency of each of the different categories. So you'd have all of your categories along your horizontal axis, and then you'd make a bar to show the frequency of each of those so that you can really visually compare. Now, the nice thing about a bar graph is it's easy to actually have multiple bar graphs within one graph. You can just add a second next to each of the original ones. And so if you have two sets of data you want to compare, that's both qualitative, then a bar graph would be a nice choice. A pie chart, on the other hand, is a circle which represents 100% that's then broken into different pieces for each of the different categories to show how it all broke down. And so you'd usually either have percentages or numbers for each. The pie chart doesn't really work too well to compare different data because you'd need different pies and it's hard to visually see the differences in sizes unless they're super big differences and sort of obvious, but if there are only small differences, it's hard to see that visually. So if you have qualitative data, those are your two choices. If you have quantitative data, you have some more choices, and it depends on whether your data is continuous, so something that's sort of changing over time and it's continuous, versus discrete data, which is discrete different uh, data points, or which would be numbers, that don't really have a continuous meaning. So like test scores would be discrete data, whereas distance at a specific time or amount of money you have at a specific time, all of that would be continuous data. So if it's quantitative, you first really should decide, is it continuous or is it discrete? If the data is continuous, you have three choices. You can make a histogram, a frequency polygon, which is sort of the same thing, or a line graph. Remember that a histogram is sort of like a bar graph except for continuous quantitative data, so all the bars are touching. A frequency polygon is made with the same data that you might have from a histogram, except you connect all of the midpoints on top of the bars in order to make a polygon shape. And a line graph is really great for showing distance over time or anything that is changing over time that either is represented by a linear equation or by just specific points that you can connect to make a broken line graph. If your data is both quantitative and discrete, you have two choices. You could make a box and whisker plot or a stem and leaf plot. The box and whisker plot is nice if you want to be able to see really visually those key numbers of the median, the minimum, and the maximum, whereas the stem and leaf is nice if you want to be able to figure out the mode easily or you want to be able to read back all of your data because it's preserved within the stem and leaf plot table. And those are all the different types of graphs. So it's a lot of different types of graphs. But remember the process. First, you have to decide, is the data qualitative or quantitative? And that will help to get you started. If it's qualitative, you only have two choices, really, a bar graph or a pie chart. And it just base, 
it's just based on what you prefer and maybe if you want to compare multiple things. If the data is quantitative, you have more choices. You have to decide if it's continuous or discrete. If it's continuous, some good choices are a histogram, a line graph, or a frequency polygon. The line graph and frequency polygon are nice if you have multiple data sets to compare because you can have the multiple lines on the same graph. The, if you have discrete quantitative data, it's really box and whisker or stem and leaf, and it depends on your preference and if you want to be able to really easily see the mode or the median. If you want to see the median, that's pretty easy to see from the box and whisker plot. It's right there given to you. You can figure that out from the stem and leaf plot as well. It's just is a little bit more work. But the stem and leaf plot has its advantages. It makes the mode really obvious because you look for any multiples, whereas you couldn't really figure that out by looking at a box and whisker plot. So you always have to think about what are we going for? What do you want to see from your representation of the data? What do you want other people to see? And that will help you to make your decisions.